Well, hello there and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host, and I'm chuckling a little bit because I've got a pretty big vehicle behind me here. Uh, it's a little bit different vehicle for me as I predominantly focus on the consumer modes of transportation, but you know, the commercial element is just as important for electrification and for lowering greenhouse gas emissions. So today I'm very excited and I want to thank Mercedes-Benz Canada for allowing me the use of this brand new to Canada. I mean, they've started coming in a little bit later than anticipated here. This is the e-Sprinter, so this the fully electric version of their Sprinter series vans. Right now it's coming in just one configuration to Canada. This is the 2500 cargo e-Sprinter with 170 inch wheelbase high roof van. So it's a lot to say and this is a 20, I guess 2025 model year since it's just coming out now in the fall and, and traditionally they they put them a quarter ahead for model years at this time of year. So uh, again, something a little bit different. It won't be too long of an episode, but I thought it'd be important to show you what's available for the shorter haul electrification segment. I mean, we know companies like Rivian are building vans for Amazon. We know Bright Drop are building larger uh, various vans as well for the short uh, to you know you could stretch medium haul depending on what that those means are but basically for short haul or final last mile kind of delivery aspects and mercedes-benz of course ford has the transit versions of those as well in different sizes for multiple use cases so does mercedes-benz but in the e-sprinter this is the first one that's coming out is the big one so let me tell you a little bit more about it so as you can see, this van is very capable in hauling uh, a lot of stuff or for various use cases, you know, you could shelve it and put uh, storage for parts for electricians or plumbers or all kinds of different trades as well. It's not strictly a delivery van or a delivery aspect use case, um, but it is uh, all new for Mercedes-Benz in the e-Sprinter uh, lineup as far as the versatility with uh, the, you know, the all round impressive um, what they call the triad of efficiency, range, and load capacity. And this does score quite well in all those three segments. Um, this is the first van that's coming in to the Canadian marketplace uh, for the e-Sprinter series. And, you know, customers that are, were thinking of taking their gas equivalent use case uh, vehicles and electrifying them, this would be a great option to look at. Um, Ford, of course, as I mentioned, has the e-Transit, but I haven't been able to get one yet to to provide some sort of narrative, so I'll keep looking for that. And this van is, again, hot off the press, so to speak. Uh, it still has USA plates on it. Uh, these are being built in the Charleston, South Carolina in the US, so obviously uh, one of the purpose reasons is, is Mercedes already has a lot of plants in the US uh, building some of these products and also for the IRA uh, credit in the States, this could uh, certainly apply for that case. And in fact, it does apply here in Canada for the ISEV rebates for the commercial aspect, and I'll talk about pricing later on. Um, so as, as I mentioned that there, there's kind of three modules uh, or uh, triad of efficiency range and low capacity. You break that down to three kind of modules that Mercedes-Benz claims on this vehicle. Um, so the battery pack is a 113 kilowatt hour size battery pack. So Mercedes, of course, is taking their, their electrification platforms. They've been, they've been doing this for quite some time and stretching it and manipulating it for these kinds of use cases. Um, and again, it's got everything else that you would expect from a Mercedes-Benz Sprinter van, right? It's, it's comfortable from, from what a work vehicle could be. Uh, it's very quiet. I mean, I love the you know all electric version. It just kind of skims along. You don't really hear much going on. I mean, it's it's there's nothing in here. It's uh, a brand new kind of cargo area, and I'll I'll show you all that as far as what what you can do with it. Uh, it's just extremely quiet, and it's actually quite easy to drive. And I'll give you my driving impressions coming up in a bit. So, those are kind of the main points from Mercedes that um, I wanted to get across on this vehicle. You know, it's really something new for them. Um, and, and they're really excited to be, uh, well, I mean, it's come out in Europe for quite some time, but here in Canada, we're getting uh, some, some newness. So let me get into telling you about some of the specs on this vehicle, just to get rid of those things. So I mentioned 113 kilowatt hour battery pack, 150 kilowatt electric motor that equates to horsepower of 204 uh, horsepower uh, on this motor. Uh, if you go to the 100 kilowatt motor, uh, you get 136 uh, horsepower and the torque is 295 foot pounds. So when you load this thing down, that's ample torque to get this thing moving and get it up to 30 miles an hour, you know, 60 kilometers an hour, that kind of speeds, which is what you're normally trudging around these things or you do a quick highway jump, more than enough power. 
the power will support a pretty good payload size. Now, for dimensions, these things are 23 feet long by 7.7 feet wide, and they're 9 feet high. So as I mentioned off the top, this is the high roof version. Um, the wheelbase is 14 feet, so that's again getting that long version, 170 inches or 14 feet. Payload, or sorry, the max gross weight of the vehicle is four and a quarter tons, which is pretty reasonable. Payload is just over 2,600 pounds from a payload. Um, uh, capacity that you can load this up according to the numbers I could find. Again, rear wheel drive, single motor. EPA range on this with that 113 kilowatt hour battery pack is rated at 331 kilometers or 205 miles. Now, I've just started to drive this thing around a little bit and it started uh, showing when I, when I got it, it was uh, only about 20%, charge it up overnight and it showed about 365, 300, almost 370 kilometers of range. There are three drive modes that you can put this in. I'm putting it in the most efficient one just to see how I can eke out range. So I don't have a full range, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you my thoughts coming up later on at the end of the show when I be able to drive a little bit more in this. The interior is, is nicely done. Again, it's functional. It's a work truck, right? It's not a limo from this case, this particular configuration. Um, so it's very functional, but it's still comfortable. Uh, a lot of plastics, of course, all that stuff. That's because you want to be able to maintain this and clean it and make it easy. You're going to be in and out of environments that might be dusty or dirty. So you want to have something that's durable, that's long lasting, and that's going to be easy to, to take care of. There are options that you can outfit this with. And again, I'll get the pricing at the end. But needless to say, it's got the you know that M bucks um, uh, DNA inside the interior with some of the controls and some of the layouts and the screen, the terminology and some of the settings. Does, Certainly, it's just a very functional screen. It's a very functional um, driver's binnacle area, as you can see by all the B-roll that I'm showing. It's just a really easy to drivers and passenger. Um, it's only the two seats on this. I don't know if there's a third seat that you can put in here as a variant. Uh, you probably can, because it seems like there's a lot of room, so you'd have to check Mercedes-Benz on some of the options here. So again, very practical, functional, and purposeful uh, front cabin and interior space. All right, so these kinds of vehicles, of course, are all about capacity and what you can do with them. So as I mentioned, this is a clean slate vehicle. This is brand new off the assembly line from the U.S. and brought up. You've got a couple of big double doors here that you could open up to get a pretty massive cargo space in here. And I'm, I'll zoom in uh, while I'm talking through some of the B-roll to show you. But, you know, I'm 5'7". Uh, I still have probably a foot and a half of head clearance up here. So because of the high version it's easy if you're doing work uh you know mechanical you need to get in and out plumbing electrical any kind of contract stuff or supplying uh, goods uh, and other services these are really great vans for that uh, because of the capacities um, as you'll see by the b-roll there are brackets on here to put shelving or to put cabinets or whatever you you there's lots of customization in these kinds of vehicles this is nice with a little bit of touch of luxury. You've got some skylights here. You've got a couple of uh, glass uh, components with some LED strip lighting and then a couple of other lights to light up the interior. Uh, but a big space, as I mentioned, I'll give you the specs here as far as what the volume is from a, uh, from a uh, cubic meter and a cubic feet perspective, but a good amount of volume that you can put some stuff and do different things. Um, you know, when I first got this and I climbed in, I said, wow, this would be a great, uh, you know, kind of, Secret Service surveillance vehicle, something you see in a spy movie where they'd outfit it, you sit there, you know, uh, nondescriptly and, and surveil. So it's it definitely has a lot of room to, to put that. You could make a mobile office into this. Why not? And, you know, somebody asked me, hey, this would be great to make an RV. Uh, you could. I don't see why you couldn't. No, but if you're if you're into that, um, you could certainly outfit this and, and, and build it to something like that if you wanted to. You would have to check with that. But it's got a lot of capacity, a lot of little niceties. Again, this particular has a closed option, so you can't get to the front cab from here. You have to go outside and into there. But a lot of potential, a lot of space to do what you would need to do depending on your work environment. And of course, there is another access into the cargo area through this sliding side door. Pull it open and it slides open. So as you can see, it's a pretty big access, uh, you know, probably about three feet, three and a half, four feet door, something like that. Good access with a step to get in. Again, you climb in and you've got a lot of your access here for stuff. So depending on your configuration and what you're doing, what you're hauling and how you want to outfit this, got a couple of nice access points. All right, so here, give you my driving thoughts of the Sprinter here as a driving in the country. Um, it's a very quiet, comfortable vehicle, again, I can't emphasize that enough and in this kind of environment. Uh, you barely hear a little bit of motor whine. Uh, 
it's really, really nice and peaceful and comfortable. The seats are comfortable. Um, they don't have the uh, uh, settings that you can do a lots of different changes to them. So you do have to check ergonomically if this will work for you. They can be a little tight depending on the configuration uh, because of this bulkhead here. Uh, but they are comfortable if you can find a, a nice seating position. There's no air or anything in the seats. It doesn't bounce up and down. It's on the spring, but very comfortable. The suspension in here is comfortable, so that makes up for it for a truck environment. Driving, as I mentioned, simply easy, just really easy. Just remember you got some length when you're making your turns, but the steering is very light, very easy to manipulate. The braking is very good. Um, this has three driving modes. Um, it has a normal and then uh, kind of an eco and then a maximum range setting. Uh, I've been riding, been driving on the maximum range setting just so I can eke out the range. It limits the power, I think, to about 50% output, so you do have to be cognizant of that. It took a little bit of speed to get up to speed on the highway, even floored, but it's still fast enough to get up there, so it's not a dangerous thing. But if you're concerned about that, you can play with those driving modes to maximize your range. Uh, there isn't a setting for regenerative braking other than paddles. There's a plus and a minus. The plus will navigate to turn it off. And then if you use the minus button to go down, you have three modes. You kind of have a, a low, medium, and high mode that you're indicated by a D, D plus, a D, and a D minus, or if I'm next to the drive indicator here on the driver's pinnacle, the driver's screen. And that simply means it just provides more regenerative braking. So I've been running this on D minus or the minus mode, which is the strongest setting. Um, and it will take you almost to a stop. It will not take you to a stop and hold you. So it doesn't have full self-driving capabilities, but it comes pretty close. So again, once you get into here and you start you know, setting it up and figuring out the settings that work for you, then it becomes really, really easy. Um, and again, most one pedal driving uh, scenarios now and systems in the, in the newer EVs are really good. They're quite smooth and this one is no exception. I can get it down to a really nice, easy stop um, without having to, to be, you know, kind of do this kind of thing when I'm accelerating or, or, or not. Um, so other than that, I mean, infotainment's okay. It's got some inbox stuff on here, as I mentioned. So you'll see some of the terminology. It's pretty simple and basic. It's got a few upgrades, I think, on it. It's got nav and that kind of stuff. So it's very helpful. Um, the digital mirror is great. Uh, utilizing the camera that's back there, you can get a straight down and a wide look, or you can get an out, out look into the traffic, and you can adjust the, the colors on that. Uh, it's been great to have that digital camera. I mean, obviously, they have to have cameras because there's no windows in this to see out, uh, out the back. So, um, you know, very functional and very good use of that technology. Side mirrors are nice and big. This has blind spot um, indication, so I would certainly always advise to get that, especially in something of this size, uh, even though it has the, the, uh, the convex mirrors, if I got that right, uh, to show closer, uh, so you can kind of see down low in your blind spot, it's always good to have more warnings. So otherwise, a very simplified dash layout, all plastics, all to, to be dealt with and, and maintaining, uh, easy maintenance on it, as I mentioned, coffee cup holders, easy. I'm sure that you can get other accessories, maybe a third seat, a middle seat or a bench on this. I'm not sure a split bench, you'll have to check on that, but there's other options you can do. A very functional and very capable cockpit and just the driving experience. It's been a buzz driving this thing, super easy. Uh, I used to drive a lot of big vehicles before, so it was nice to be able to remember how to do that. Used to trailer as well. So uh, yeah, a really easy vehicle to drive. And I think that's the use cases for people that are in this a lot, all day driving around, doing deliveries, whatever. It's nice to have something comfortable to drive. So I hope you enjoyed all the information I'm providing here on this. Um, from a pricing perspective, that's kind of where this thing's going to shine depending on your use case and what you're doing. So the base price on these up here are $99,500 Canadian. That's about $20,000 more than a relatively equipped, just actually a little less than $20,000 more than a relatively equipped um, same version of the internal combustion version. I did some price comparisons with the smallest engine option that's available, a small diesel for this and looked at some of the options and it was about 15 to 20 K difference in that. The Canadian government, of course, provides an incentive for commercial vehicles and this is being class there with the category is class 2B, 2B to or not to be, 2 Bravo, um, it's a $10,000 incentive. So that 115 now is 105 and that 105 to 85 is about 20,000. So still, still a lot, I get that from an upfront purchase price. But let's look at fuel. 
So I did a calculation just based on, you know, looking at some of the stats and what the use case is for these vehicles, the amount of kilometers on average driven a year uh, in the use case, and, and what kind of fuel it would, you know, how much it would cost to fuel that uh, using $1.50 a liter for diesel, which diesel hasn't been that for quite some time, but so I'm being very generous using you know, uh, a little bit lower range, like about 300 kilometers of range on this versus the something higher you can get in the warmer temps, using level two charging at uh, the overnight rates because you, you could easily charge this overnight, using all that kind of functionality and being able to determine that the, the payout on this is about, or the, uh, the return on the investment, as I like to say, the ROI is about six years. So if you own this for six years, you'll make up that $20,000 difference strictly in fuel costs. I'm only talking about fuel. If you factor in maintenance onto that, then that's a different ballgame. Then you have to deduct that as well from, because you're not, your maintenance on this is virtually nothing, but some tire rotations and some checks here and there, and windshield washer fluid and some wind, uh, windshield wipers every year. That's about it, you know, a set of snow tires, that kind of stuff. So it's very little to maintain on this. So maybe that's another five to $10,000 off of that difference. Let's conservatively say $5,000 for maintenance over six years. So now that delta is only, and so at 20,000 at the top is 15,000. And now my ROI instead of six years is probably around five, uh, five years or something like that. So these are the things that you need to work out specifically if you're thinking about these kind of vehicles for fleets. If you're thinking about for a personal use perspective, your own business, right, or you have a small business and you need some of these vans, this is where you start to work out those numbers. I know there's other factors, there's insurance and all this other stuff. I get it. It's not as simple and there's also vehicle depreciation. I know all that. But, you know, most um, people that run these kind of vehicles are going to run them to the ground. They're going to maximize the, the purchase price and their use for these vehicles as long as they can. They're not switching over. You don't see Pure Later switching over vans every two years. They're pump. They're getting as much out of these delivery things as possible, right? To get their, uh, you know, to get their money back and make money on these vehicles. That's what it's all about. So it has a very positive and, and good ROI story, and that when you factor in the total cost of ownership into that, never mind that you're emitting zero emissions as well. So you can leave these on. You can leave the heater going when you're stopped in the winter doing a delivery. You're not idling, so you're not interfering with any. Uh, in, in, inside city laws as far as anti-idling and this kind of stuff. These are, have a, you know, they start, they heat up really quickly, right away pretty well. All this, the stuff that EVs, we, we know they, this handles really well because of that big pack and that low center of gravity. So it's a much different handling. You don't get a lot of this higher um, sway to sway that you do on a big van like this that you would normally get on a nice vehicle, especially unloaded, okay, when you load it, it's different. So there's a lot of factors playing into here that will will tr typically be of benefits to drivers and to people using these kinds of vehicles. So hopefully that uh, explains a lot with the pricing and tells you why I thought this was important to talk about. That's a, that's a business, right? And you're, you're investing in your business. It's a similar aspect with one of these. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution show. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, again, all my contact information, uh, my email, everything is here. I'm on Twitter still. See how long that lasts. I uh, want to thank, of course, Mercedes-Benz Canada again for allowing me the use of this vehicle, which is fun, different. I came in, again, I'm doing some house renos. This comes in really handy. Uh, taking stuff to the dump, picking some big items up. This has been an extremely handy vehicle to have for this week. I'm, I'm very fortunate that the timing worked out for this. So thanks again to them and hope you enjoyed it. Everybody stay safe and keep on looking at the electric marketplace because it is not slowing down. It continues to heat up and go and go and go. And it's those loud mufflers like that that we need to get rid of over time. Anyway, everybody stay safe, enjoy, and I'll see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.